What is up everybody? Welcome back to the City Life Project YouTube channel for yet another picks and predictions video. Today we are going to Ryzen Landmark 8 in Saga. If you're new to the channel, smash that like button and subscribe. Ring that bell for notifications so you never miss an upload, so you never miss a live stream. And let's get right into it. Starting with the early prelims, going all the way to the main event. <laughs> Starting with Kato Ishigo versus Satoshi Katashima. Three kickboxing prelim fights, ladies and gentlemen. One MMA Ishigo. Katashima has a Muay Thai base. His fundamentals are good. Nothing special. And he is 33 years of age. Kato Ishigo, he's younger, more dangerous. Has some really nice straight punches and some solid low kicks as well. I'm going with Keito Ishigo. I know he doesn't have as much experience, but he's coming off a good win. And I think he's just going to probably get the knockout. Though his tools aren't as polished as that of a Katashima. I do think he picks apart his legs in the first round when he's immobile. Can't check them anymore lands that straight punch, despite only being 19 years of age. Let's move on to the next one. Hania Hashimoto versus Rikito. Again, another kickboxing affair. A lot of local saga fighters on this card. I'm going with Hania Hashimoto. He's got dangerous power, good defense. Rikito is talented, but he doesn't have the defense that the veteran Hashimoto, who's 29 years of age, has. Rikito, 22 years of age. Now, Hashimoto has fought in Ryzen before. He has more experience, like I just said. Last fight, he scored a beautiful first round TKO. Going with the more dangerous and more experienced fighter here in Hashimoto. Next on the card here, we have a fun one. Rito bravely up against Kyohei Furumura. This Honestly, he's going to be the best prelim on the card. This fight could have been on the main card, ladies and gentlemen. Someone's getting knocked out. This one should be a very fun firefight. Both of them super young in Bravely being 23 years old. For Maruma being only 24. For Maruma, great Muay Thai. I would say a little bit faster as well. Whereas Bravely just is a little bit more well-rounded in the sport has really good kicks dangerous straight punches good defense and also a good volume striker as well he has a win in horizon already head kick ko i think overall this could go either way but i'm gonna go with rito bravely final prelim on the card and it will be mma we got taiki Yahiro against Yuto Araki. Araki 2 and 0 oh in mixed martial arts, 1 and 0 oh as a pro. Up against a 3 and 2 Yahiro Araki. Got a KO TKO in Bloom in the first round and also a KO TKO in the outsider as an amateur. So two knockouts in his two MMA fights. Up against a 3 and 2 fighter who is on a two fight win streak right now. Fighting in deep, making their rise and debut, but has not fought anyone of note. And the only wins they have are against people making their debuts, 1 and 6 and 10 and 11, respectively. I'm going with Arake on this one. Only one pro fight and one amateur fight. I get it, but just overall, based on the little tape that I was able to watch on both these guys and listening to some of the other Ryzen card rundowns, he's got better fight IQ. He actually looks like a well-rounded fighter not just a guy scrapping in there and again no disrespect to yahiro both of them new to the sport his grappling his defense his takedown defense is actually very good he's dangerous power in his strikes and despite less experience i just think he looks better so we're going with yuto araki now time to open the card with yoga fukuchi against Ryuhei Sakai. Ryuhei Sakai did take this fight on short notice. They added another local guy to the card. Having said that, I'm going with Sakai. I'm going with Sakai. 
look, I know he's taking this on short notice, so he, he very well could just get smothered by the jujitsu guy, by the grappler guy, and lose. But I think overall, he just is the better MMA fighter. He's more well-rounded. His striking is his strength, I will say that overall. He has got his wins in worse promotions, I get it, you know, in Bloom. No, versus that of Deep, where Fukuchi got his wins. Mind you, only three wins and five losses. Two and one as a pro for Ryuhei Saki. And like I said, two and one in his last five fights. His last fight in Bloom, but yeah, just look at his record here. He did go six and four as an amateur. He's got that knockout power where Fukuchi very much more a jujitsu guy. Getting up there in age as well. Deep is the better promotion than Bloom, but he hasn't really had too much success in Deep either. 2-0 on the amateur scene. Fukuchi, just too one-dimensional for me. I'm going with the underdog. I am going with the guy, the MMA guy taking this fight on short notice. Moving up the card, ladies and gentlemen, we have another kickboxing fight. Takumi Tarada against Keikyo Tominaga. I am going with the heavy favorite in this one at minus 400, Takumi Tarada. Both are very talented, both are very polished and professional. And when I say polished and professional, I mean their technique is sound. These guys aren't amateur kickboxers anymore. They're pros, they put on a show, and their technique is very, very good. Tarada's left hook and counter punches are money, whereas Tominaga recovers quick, tough, and he lands some good straight punches as well. This should be a great fight, close fight. Tominaga is a good underdog too. If you want to sprinkle a little bit on some underdogs, this card at plus 275. Tarada just doesn't take as much damage. Now, Tominaga can recover quickly, but the fact that I'm able to note that, the boys at the We Are Rising podcast are able to note that, not necessarily a good thing, because eventually your health bar is going to run out and you're going to go straight Chuck Liddell, right? So, yeah, he can take a punch now, but the fact that Tarada he doesn't get hit as much is always a positive. He's got good defense, and I think he gets the knockout. I think Tarada gets the knockout, so that is my pick. Moving up the card, we have Yuki Ito versus Masatoshi Ueda. Masatoshi Ueda making his debut in Horizon. Yuki Ito looking to extend that win streak i'm going with yuki ito on this one minus 450 he's the heavy favorite now i i don't think he should be that much of a favorite but let's explain a why let's explain why ueda doesn't necessarily have the best takedown defense he's a scrappy fighter but i don't think ito is going to be taking him down much be perfectly honest i do think this stays on the feet 19 and 9 for Masatoshi Ueda, he did win his last fight. 3 KO, 2 KO, 3 submissions, 13 decisions. 13 and 9 in Pancras, 4 and 0 in Gladiator, professional mix and martial arts. He beat a 4 and 3 guy in his last fight. Lost to 14 and 4, 4 and 0, 13 and 8, 6 and 3. And his only two wins against like decent guys, a 10 and 4 guy and a 7 and 2 guy, have been by split decision. So take that with a grain of salt. His last win streak was a four fight win streak between 2017 and 2018. We had some decent wins sprinkled in there, but two of them were meh. Two of them were meh. Yuki Ito, 15 and five, three and two in his last five fights. He's 26 years of age, 10 years younger, and he's on a two fight win streak. Seven KO, two KO, two submissions, six decisions, five and one in Ryzen, seven and four in deep. Be a 9-5 guy and an 8-10 guy in his last two fights. Split decision in both of them, which is like, eh. You want to see him utilize that power. You want to see him utilize his straight punches. I think Ito does have good grappling. Like I said, I don't think he uses it. I think they strike, and I think Ito actually tags Ueda in this one. As Ueda elects to brawl and throws caution to the wind at times ito's faster and he's got the power advantage i think this is just going to be an all-out striking war or someone gets ko'd and i do think that someone is ueda he's plus 300 again his last two wins against decent guys were split decisions so 
I'm not picking this underdog. I'm not picking this underdog. Next on the card, we have Kenta Takizawa against Shohei Nose. Nose 11 and 4 as a pro. 3 and 2 in his last five fights. However, he's 1 1, lost 1, 1 1, lost 1, 1 1. Look at Takizawa. Three fight losing streak right now. He is two and three in his last five fights. A 29 year old, 13 and 10 in his pro MMA career. Nine KO, TKO, zero submissions, four decisions. He does struggle with the grappling. Three and five in Ryzen. And nine and four in Pancrase. He got absolutely ragdolled by Shinobu Ota. Nokoi Inoue beat him up. Kaya Sakura beat him up. Three rounds, though, but still. And his last two wins in the promotion weren't against... Well, I mean, Imanari is, is someone of note, but guys he should have beaten, right? Guys he should have beaten. Ogi Kubo smothered him as well. Yeah, Everyone of note in Ryzen, for the most part, beat him pretty soundly. So desperately looking to get back into the win column. Shohei Nose, 11-4-2 as a pro, 26 years of age. 1 KO, TKO, 8 submission, 2 decision. What is he good at? Well, the thing is opponent, Takizawa, is not necessarily good at grappling. 8-2-2 two two in Shuto, 1-2 in Road to UFC. That's why he actually competed in Road to UFC, where he lost in the finals, if I'm not mistaken. Lost a grappling match in Bloom. Went to Shuto, got a win, and he's now making his debut in Ryzen. He lost to Rinya Nakamura, that's right, in Road to UFC. Had some decent wins leading up to that as well. A really good win streak in both kickboxing and MMA. And he's actually got most of his wins via submission. So he's very well-rounded, and that's why I'm going with him. Like, he was on the UFC's radar, right? Takizawa's a decent underdog at plus 135, but Nose minus 175, I gotta take him. I gotta take him. And though Takizawa has reportedly been working on his grappling in some decent gyms, Nose's already good at grappling. Nose's good on the feet if he finds that he is getting the better of Takizawa on the feet in the striking. He's got kickboxing experience as well as grappling, and he's active in kickboxing and grappling outside of MMA as well. So he's continuing continuing to polish his skills he's got a good right hand and like i said he was on the ufc's radar so i'm taking this one i can't believe the odds are are as close as they are on this one unless takizawa has just become an absolute beast on the mat upon working on his grappling in this camp moving up the card we have dachi abe up against kota shirakawa ladies and gentlemen now i'm just gonna say it i'm just gonna say it Dachi Abe, he should win this one. He should win this one. He's the favorite at minus 250. Looking at his opponent, four and four. Nothing special, okay? Nothing special. 30 years of age, four and four. Two and three in his last five, but he did win his last one. All his wins and all his losses are finishes. He either gets knocked out or submitted, or he knocks out or submits his opponent. Kota, three KO TKOs, one submission, zero decision. He's suffered three losses via submission, one loss via knockout. He's fought all eight of his professional fights in Pancras. He has a nasty right hand, ladies and gentlemen. This could be a quick brawl or a long, boring technical fight, and I'm leaning towards a quick brawl. Dace Abe, 12 and 7 as a pro, 3 and 2 in his last five fights. That's right, he's on a two fight losing streak, 32 years of age. Has taken quite a bit of damage throughout his career, but he's got some power in his mitts as well, ladies and gentlemen. Six, seven KO, TKO, zero submission, five decision. This is why I'm saying this one is going to be a brawl, ladies and gentlemen. Three and two in Ryzen, one and two in UFC, zero and two in one. He's fought in top tier promotions. Lost Igor Tanabe, got heel hooked, who hasn't by Igor Tanabe at this point. Lost to a 12 and 13 Shingo Suzuki. That was a bad loss. That was a bad loss. A deep impact 112. Before then, he's riding a three fight win streak in Ryzen, but he's 16 and 13 guy, nine and two and 20 and nine. Like I said, ladies and gentlemen, Dachi Abe should win this one, and I'm going with Abe to win this one. I think he gets the KO because they're just going to swang and bang and I, I think he gets the KO. Shirakawa though, at plus 115, that's that's not a bad underdog given that he's just as dangerous and we know that this one is going to be Rock'em Sock'em at the center of the ring. So sprinkle if you dare. Let's move on to the next one. Tenth fight on the card, we have Takahiro Ashida versus 
Hiroaki Suzuki, the general killer Suzuki. Only three and three as a pro up against Ashida, who's 26, 13, and two. 39 years of age for Suzuki up against a 34-year-old with a little bit more miles on him as far as MMA fights go in Ashida Suzuki. Three and three, like I said, three KO, TKO, zero submission. And he's only lost via decision three times. He's three and three in Ryzen. Hasn't beaten the best guys, let's be perfectly honest. And comes from a Muay Thai and shootbox background. So he's got some wicked striking. He's got some wicked striking despite him getting up there in age. But look at his opponent, Ashida. Two and three in his last five fights. He did lose his last fight. Eight KO, TKO, five submission, 13 decision. He's very well rounded. He's two and three in Ryzen. 12, four and one in deep. Six and oh in Brave Gym. And two and two in the real fight championship. He has some experience in shoot boxing as well he competes in kickboxing he actually fought ren hiromoto in bellator kickboxing in 2019 grappling matches kickboxing as well as mma long career here where he's put together win streaks where he's suffered long losing streaks he truly is a journeyman in the sport despite him being 39 years of age i'm going with suzuki <laughs> I'm going with Suzuki. He's plus 180. That's one of the only underdogs that I'm super confident will get this one done. I think he gets the knockout. He actually has good submission defense, despite him not being an aggressive grappler. He's got good submission defense. He's been training with Kleber and the boys, okay, right? He's big for the weight class. He hits hard and his kicks are absolutely deadly and he's never been finished. Ashida is a good grappler, but I think Suzuki scrambly enough from the bottom and has good enough submission defense where Ashida's going to be ca caught trying to scramble to regain position versus have like a technical grappling match where he's just the the better of the two right so I think that will give him some issues in this one he will be forced to fight on the feet if he really wants to get the finish if he really wants to sway the judges because again he's got good grappling he's got good submission but his offensive wrestling isn't necessarily there in Ashida. so i'm going with suzuki let's go with the underdog locking it in next up on the card we have sahori oshima against claire lopez oshima 12 and 4 as a pro she is four and one in her last five fights she lost her last fight she's 29 years of age going up against claire lopez Eight and five, three and two in her last five fights. She lost her last fight. Still looking competitive in that one, though. As we take a look at Claire Lopez, three KO, two KO, four submissions, one decision. That's what I like to see. Let's freaking go. One and one in Ryzen, zero and one in Bellator. Lost to Izawa, but honestly, guys, who hasn't is, at this point? Izawa's cleaning up the women's division in Ryzen and in Deep and Deep Jewels. Got a great win in Ryzen Landmark 5. Beat a 4 and 3 gal before that. He's also fought in Combate Global. Oshima, only recent loss coming to Siwoon Park in Deep, but she just didn't look herself in that one if you ask me because she usually just dominates her opponents as you can see here i mean this one was a split decision but it should have been a unanimous decision in my opinion she goes on long win streaks before suffering losses and again that one just seemed like it was an off night for her her grappling's good her striking's okay but that's not her bread and butter three wins in rise and five and two in deep jewels two and one in deep i like how scrappy claire lopez is i'll be rooting for her. i want her to get this win because this will be an awesome win for her but i'm going with oshima she is the big favorite of minus 335 <laughs> Got some good wins in Deep and Ryzen. Still young, good grappler, dangerous submission, and she dominates her opponents in her wins, like I said. Lopez does have some dangerous striking, though. Her straight punches and her, and her counter hooks are actually really good on the feet, and she's historically fought just really good opponents, too, right? So it's not like Oshima's a tall task for her outside of Bellator outside of any other bigger promotions like Combate Global that she's fought in. Not a bad underdog at plus 225, although I'm staying away from betting on women's MMA. You know how I roll, especially in Japan. Moving up the card, we have Yusuke Yachi up against Rikuto Shirakawa. Shirakawa, 11 and nine as a pro. He's got one draw in there as well. However, his recent run has been nothing short of outstanding, going four and one in his last five fights he's 32 years of age he is taking this fight on short notice he is taking this fight up a weight class five ko tko zero submission six decisions 
three and two in Ryzen, six, six and one in deep. He lost his last fight in Ryzen 44 to a 17 and six guy. Before then was on a four fight win streak. Beat a seven and one guy, eight and three, 26 and 15 and nine and nine. Not bad if you ask me. One okay win, two good wins, one meh win, but not bad. But again, taking this fight at lightweight, it's never fought a lightweight before. Taking this fight on just a few days notice as well. Going up against Yusuke Yachi, 25 and 13 as a pro. He is three and two in his last five fights. He's on a two fight win streak, 33 years of age. Full camp for Yachi. This is his weight class. Six KOT, go three submissions, 16 decisions. Nine and seven in Ryzen 1 and 0 in Bellator at one of their you know, cross promotional shows. Beat a 15 and 4 guy in his last fight and 16 and 4 before then. I like the 16 and 4 win, the 15 and 14, or whatever. Like, again, he was the huge favorite in that one. Lost to Luis Gustavo, got absolutely destroyed in that one. And uh, yeah, D'Souza destroyed him as well. He beat Kyoji Takeda, though, and Yuki Kawana. So as of late, he's actually like risen to the occasion and, and beaten some good guys but man when he loses he gets absolutely destroyed so i do think yachi's gonna win this one i do think yachi's gonna win this one i mean how can you not root for a guy whose nickname is dark but uh, yeah, i'm going for yachi on this one by the way when i put together my notes earlier today on thursday yachi on betway was the underdog plus 120 so i don't know if they know something we don't because all the other betting lines had him at like my Minus 111, minus 106 on Bovada, but he was plus 110 on Betway. So I'm going with Yachi as this This still could be a close fight. And I think if both of them had a camp, like if Sirakawa had a camp, this would be an incredible back and forth just war, ladies and gentlemen. And I think the betting odds should be that close if Shirakawa had a training camp, but he didn't. But he did not. And he up a weight class where he's not necessarily used to. Yachi's good, but he's not great. His pressure and strikes will just be too much for him. Yachi hits hard and is a volume striker. And I think just because of short notice, Yachi is going to win this one. Odds are pick him or fucking split though regardless. So if you can find Yachi at plus money, you might as well take him. Just like I did. Co-main event of the evening, ladies and gentlemen, because all the original headliners are a bunch of hooligans. Kazumasa Majima versus Masukazu Imanari, the legend, ladies and gentlemen. Still fighting. Where you at, Ryan Hall? Where you at? Majima, 16 and 4 as a pro. He is two and three in his last five fights however he's on a two fight win streak going up against imanari 39 wins 22 losses two draws one and four in his last five fights and you can tell he just wants to get to that 40th win so bad imanari's 48 years of age majima's 32 imanari like i said one and four in his last five five fights on a Two fight losing streak right now. One KO TKO, 28 submissions, 10 decisions. Four and three in Dream, three and three in one, one and two in Rise, and zero and two in Pride. He's fought in them all, ladies and gentlemen. All, he fought all the major Asian organizations. Oh my goodness. Yeah, his last win was to a 26 and eight guy, which great, cool. That was back in 2021. But other than that, it's just been sad, sad stuff watching Imanari as of late. Still does some grappling and still does a good job in grappling. But the guys that he's submitting are absolute cans. Even, you know, back in 2014 and 15. Majima, he's got some helium right now. He's in his prime. 16 and 4. He's a grappler though. So that's the only concerning thing is he could very well get caught in Imanari's trap here. Regardless, one KO, TKO, 13 submissions, two decisions. We might see just a competitive grappling match here. But if that's the case, I mean, you're, that's given Imanari the edge. That's allowing his game plan to be employed. Two and three in Ryzen, seven and zero oh in Shuto. He's undefeated in Shuto. Beat a 5 0 guy and 26 and 12 guy. Von Flu choke at Ryzen 42, which was beautiful against Takahiro Ashida and he scored a unanimous decision against Yokoyama. Lost to the top of the division in Ryzen to Kanahara, Kleber, and Sato. Before that, he was on a huge win streak between 2014 and 2019. He had not lost, ladies and gentlemen. He had not lost. Again, good wrestling, good just all-around MMA fighter as far as as far as <laughs> well-rounded fighter. His striking leaves a little bit 
to be desired, but that could play right into Imanari's favor. He's the huge favorite Majima at minus 650. I am picking him to win as well. Please don't play the jujitsu game. Just please don't play jujitsu. Please don't go full one championship grappling match in the co-main event, even though it's slated to be MMA in this one. Because if he forces Imanari to stay on his feet or forces Imanari to shoot, he's just going to kick him in the face, right? This is a rise. And Imanari can't... Like, Imanari would be so successful in the UFC even at 48 years of age, ladies and gentlemen, let, let's just say, because he's a little bit more crafty than that of a... Uh Gracie, a Kron Gracie. Let's just never put Imanari up against Taporia. That's all. Imanari has not taken a lot of damage lately. I guess that's something to note, as most of his losses have been unanimous decision and you know snoozers. To be to be perfectly honest, he hasn't been knocked out in a while. This either is just a grappling match. <sighs> Sorry. And, and, and look, it will be high level, but I just don't think it'll be like exciting, like scrambly, right? This is a weird fight. This is a weird fight. So I think it's going to be either a more boring slash technical, and I don't mean to be disrespectful, just not an exciting grappling match. I think it's either that or it's a weird fight of Majima evading takedowns, ankle picks, Imanari rolls and looking for counter strikes and soccer kicks. I'm going with Majima. I don't think Imanari gets it done and I think Majima wins unanimous decision. Okay, main event of the evening coming up next here, ladies and gentlemen, and it is a good one. This is actually such a fun main event of the evening. Luis Gustavo against Yoshinori Hori, ladies and gentlemen. Brazil versus Japan in the main event of the evening in Saga. Aggressive fighter in Gustavo versus a very good counter striker in Hori. I'm going with Gustavo. Minus 210. He is the favorite. He's a volume striker. He is a blitzer. And honestly, unlike a Robert Whitaker, who's a blitzer and volume striker, Gustavo likes to brawl and will not evade the pocket if you want to stand in the center of the ring and just go to town so this might be more of a brawler versus technical striker and hori on the back foot hori moving side to side hori utilizing his great footwork i think gustavo is the better athlete as well he usually comes in a little bit more jacket a little bit more uh how you say spokesperson for the Paulo Costa secret juice. Hori's a decent grappler though. He's just well-rounded, but I don't think Gustavo's gonna try to take him to the ground. And I don't think Hori is as dangerous as Gustavo as far as his just straight punch power. He does land some nice counter hooks, but just overall, he's not the knockout artist that Gustavo is. Hori is plus 160 though, so he's not a bad underdog. The rising star is 13 and four. He is three or four and one in his last five fights. He's coming off a win. Six KO, TKO, zero submission, seven decisions. Four and one in Ryzen, zero and one in the UFC. And he had that great win against Spike Carlisle where he absolutely dominated him. Body shot after body shot after body shot. Lost to Vugar Karamov. He was on a three fight win streak before then beating a 13 and six guy, 23 and eight and four and a one. You look at Luis Gustavo, also four and one in his last five fights, but on a three fight win streak 13 and two as a pro and only 27 years old very well rounded loves to finish his opponent every which way seven ko tko five submission one decision five and two in ryzen three and oh in katana fight he called you takeda 15 and 4, 31 and 17, Yuri Ohara, and a 23 and 12, Yosuke Yachi in his last fights. One split decision, the other two were TKOs, respectfully. He lost to Pachuki Pitbull at Ryzen 20 via soccer kick in the first round, and Mikuru Asakura. But other than that, who I mean, Mikuru Asakura, solid. Pachuki Pitbull. Obviously, solid and re well respected fighter. Other than that, he hasn't lost in pro mixed martial arts. He has some good wins on his resume as well. Six and two guys, six and oh, nine and five, and as recently as 15 and four, like we said. So, I'm going with Gustavo, ladies and gentlemen. Let me know your picks in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Join us for the fight companion this weekend. We'll be covering Ryzen Landmark 8. Appreciate you guys for watching. Smash that like button, and we'll see you on the next one.
A good shot to get life to the sheep, leash nice, but nah, he ain't nice underneath. Got a price on a leash, I don't trust when they speak. Be sound a real spite for the meat. Boy, I bleed with the best, got the people, the eagle and dons, I done feed with the flesh, trying to smeag with the race. You believe that I'm blessed, got a speed to the left. All of my clothes, I be eager to mess, oh no. Might put her on a roster, I bet she gon' dread it. Take all my betters, run through it like betters, might make her a tenant. The way that she moving it, highly a tenant. She speak a little Spanish and so does